The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. This week starts the second year of Mystery Theater, and it will be a week to remember, a week devoted to the world's master of mystery, horror, and the bizarre, Edgar Allan Poe. Each night this week, it will be my pleasure and honor to bring you one of Poe's masterpieces, our respectful tribute to the creative genius of a truly great author whose stories will live for all time. Help us celebrate the start of our second year of Mystery Theater by joining us every night this week in our salute to the world's acknowledged master of the macabre. Of all the fears that have plagued mankind, probably the most terrible was the possibility of being buried alive. Oh, don't shrink away. You have nothing to fear, modern medical science being what it is. But not so many years ago, the thought of waking up in one's closed coffin beneath six feet of earth, that was a horrible thought indeed. And an ever-present danger, which led, in at least one case, to a remarkably strange experiment. Let me go. Oh, please, let me go. I'm dead, I tell you, I'm Dead. Guy, Guy, I must release her. No, Gordon, no, she's alive. Only my spirit lives. <laughs> my body has been dead for days. Guy, I beg you, <laughs> let me release her from the spell of mesmerism I cast over her. Yes, yes. Release me. No, Victorine, no. Oh, no, my darling. If I let Gordon break his hold on you, you will be dead. And I, I can't face the horror of that. Then a worse horror awaits you. Oh, horror! Far! Far worse! Our mystery drama, The Premature Burial, was adapted from the Edgar Allan Poe classic, especially for the Mystery Theater, by George Lothar, and stars Keir DeLay. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As you know, I'm an inveterate and incurable reader of diaries. The Paston Letters, John Evelyn, Pepys, Boswell, Young Pastor Kilbert. I've read them all and many more besides. The daily journals, that is, of lesser-known folk. In so doing, I've happened upon some curious tales, but none, I assure you, that can match in sheer terror the one I bring you now. I happened upon it years ago in a small, out-of-the-way bookshop in London, England. It's the journal of a young doctor, Dr. Gordon Rainey, and it recounts certain events that took place in the year 1810. Now, let me see uh, where to begin. Ah, here. I arrived at the Bull and Bear Inn in Salisbury, the doctor writes... In one of the worst of storms, and having stabled my horse and seen to its proper care, soon found myself in the rooms my friend Guy Peterson had engaged for himself. In all the years I'd known him, since undergraduate days at Cambridge, I'd never known this closest of my friends to be in such a state of overwrought nerves. Thank God you come, Gordon. Thank God you're here at last, my friend. I came as soon as I could after getting your message, but, but what is it? I, I've never seen you in such a state of nerves. <laughs> My God, you're actually trembling. She's dead. Dead, you see. And they buried her last week, but I, I must see her once again. Gaze on her face. And... Now look at me. What? Look at me. Look full into my eyes. What? Gordon, what, what are you doing? I'm merely calming you down through the use of mesmerism. Mesmerism? What, what in heaven's name is that? I, I, and why do you stare at me? As if... 
as if I... That's right, old friend. That's right. Calm down. Quiet yourself. Relax. Just loosen up. Let yourself go. That's it. That's it. There now. Feel better? Why? Why, yes. But how did you do it? What is this mesmerism, did you say? Yes. A means of controlling another person by, well, to put it simplistically, dominating him with one's own will, the force of one's own willpower. But but that's miraculous. And, and yet you, you did it. I feel ever so much calmer now because you made me. Good. And now, Guy, calmly tell me why you sent that urgent message to meet you here in Salisbury. Victorine. Victorine is dead. Ah, well, I, I know how you must feel, and of course I sympathize deeply, but her death, isn't it a blessing? A blessing? She's dead. Victorine is dead. And at last free of the hellish life Sir Giles Buckingham led her. Come now, Guy. Is that not something to thank God for? Well, I suppose so. I suppose so. Oh, my dear good friend. I know how much you loved her. Loved her? She was my heart, my soul, my very life. A life that ended for me when her family forced her to marry Sir Charles. We talked of it again and again, but now that she is dead, perhaps you can try to take up your life again. I must see her, Gordon. See her? That's why I'm here. Why I asked you here. I must see her, Gordon. Gaze upon her lovely face once more. But but she's buried, buried a week ago, you said. In the family vault on the Buckingham Estate. I want to go there tonight. Force entry into the vault. Open her coffin. And look at her once more. Just once more. I need you because I... I fear to go alone. There is more to fear than that, Guy. What do you mean? A, a body, dead and buried for a week in a damp and virtually airless vault... Guy, you'll not see Victorine as she was in life. I shall see her. Guy, this is mad. I beg you to... I her. must. I don't care what she has become. I must see her once more. Must I do it alone? Will you help me? If it is your wish, you wish it so strongly, then... Yes. I'll help you. <laughs> We must be... Be careful not to be discovered, Gordon. This moonlight makes everything as clear as day. Uh, there'll be no one about unless the estate is guarded at night against poachers. Let's hope not. Uh, wind creaking up. That should help a little. Cover any sound we make. Yes. Uh, here's the gate to the estate. Uh, is it locked? Uh, soon find out. Uh, no. Come. so much for that. Now, the the location of the vault, do you, do you know where it is? Yes. That line of copper beaches on the hill, do you see them? Yes. The vault lies just beyond. Come, wait. That barking dog. If the place is guarded by a dog or even dogs. Now, don't let your nerves get the best of you. Bad enough to face trouble when it comes, not before. That dog. It's here on the ground. And closer. Gordon. Steady, man, steady. Yes, it's on the grounds, all right. And coming this way. Come. Let's step out into the open. Into the open? If the dog is coming this way, I want to meet it in full moonlight. Why, Gordon? Why? Because my only chance of subduing the beast, if it can be done, will be with my eyes. My voice, too, yes, but, but the eyes. There, there, I see it. Coming over the hill against the moonlight. Good Lord. Oh, my ruthless animal, Gordon. It's a massive and a big one. And he's caught our scent. Come on, step, step out into the moonlight. Well, uh, quickly, or all is lost. Yes, yes. Gordon, Gordon, I'm scared. Stand still. Make no move. Leave this to me. All right, boy. Quiet down. Quiet down now. That's a good dog. That's it. We're not here to do you any harm, boy. We're friends. Your friends. Yes, that's right, boy. There's a good dog. A fine dog. 
Unbelievable. You stopped him with your eyes. Held him to the one spot just by looking at him, and with your voice, you soothed him. You calmed him. Took all the fight out of him. Yes. And now, let's get on to the vault. Here we are. The vault. Locked? I'm afraid so. I'll have to use the pry bar I brought. I'll be as quiet as you can. Yes. There. Gate's open. We can go in. Light the lantern, Gordon. Guy. Guy, once more, I urge you not to go through with this. I must. You know I must. Now listen to me. Light the lantern. I'm lighting the lantern, but listen to me. You remember Victorine as she was. The lovely, innocent, gentle girl who was forced to marry Sir Giles seven years ago. The torments he put her through. The daily torture of living with such a beast. These alone would have changed her face. But she's dead as well. And buried here a whole week. Guy, I beg you once again... Remember her as she was, not as she must now be. Shine the lantern about. Very well. Oh, dear heaven. There are at least a dozen coffins piled one on another. How can we tell which is Victorian? Uh, hers would be one of the topmost. Yes, and the velvet covering would be the newest. The brass studs still bright. Ah, that one up there, I think. Let's get it down and see. Just let me put the lantern over there. So. Now then, I'll take the head of the coffin, you the other end. Uh, can you reach it? Just All right, pull then. Now pull it to the edge. And when we get it to the edge, we can put our hands under it and let it down very gently. Yes, yes. Gordon. I heard it. What was it? It couldn't be. Can't be what I thought. Shh. voice. And it comes from inside the coffin. Oh, dear. And above this is Victorine's. Gordon, she's alive. Alive. Let's put it on the ground. On the ground. Easy now. Easy. Ah. The pry bar now. Pry off the lid. Yes. Yes. Well, hurry, man. My nerves. I'm trembling no strings. Oh, give it to me. Now, then. Hurry. Hurry. Well, I'm working as fast as I can. There. The lantern. Quickly, the lantern. Yes, yes. Shine it into the coffin. There. Oh, look. Victorine alive. Alive. Oh, God, it's you. It's you. Oh, God, thank you, thank you. Horace, I've been through. All right, gently now, my dear, gently. God, you, God. Yes, yes, my dear. Come on, Guy, lend a hand. Help me lift her out. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, the lie. Oh, my dear. It must have been horrible for you. I don't want to think about it. I can't, I can't tell you. To wake up, at first not knowing where you are, and everything black, pitch black, suffocating, scarce enough air to breathe. The best not and then, to think about. And then you move, and you, you feel the sides of the coffin. Narrow, so narrow. And you reach up, and you... Touch the lid, but the lid's only an inch or two from your face. Suddenly, you know. Oh, heaven help me, you know. You scream with the terror of it. You scream and scream and scream. Stop it. Stop it at once. At once. Yes. Yes, Gordon. You're alive, and that's all that matters. Yes. And thanks to what I called a a mad Um, impulse, you're safe. Oh, yes. Oh, my darling, my dearest, Sweetheart, sweetheart. Listen to me, you two. Listen, we face a problem. What problem? Well, how are you going to take her back to Sir Giles? How explain all this? Sir Giles will have you, have us arrested for breaking and entering. She's not going back to Sir Giles. She's coming with me, away from this hellish place. Oh, my darling. You can't do that. She is his wife. I'll die before I let Sir Giles get his hand on her. A promise you may very well keep, my dear sir. 
How did you... The barking of my dog aroused me. I, in turn, roused my keepers, who were out and about scouring the woods. As it happens, I came this way, saw the light of your lantern flickering in the vault, and prepared to surprise what I thought to be grave robbers. Well, as it happens, I am the one surprised. Indeed, I'm shocked. I scarcely expected to find Victorine alive. Yes, she's alive. And from here on, Sir Giles will live, I pray, a far happier life with me than ever she did with you. Move aside, sir. I think not. If you're going anywhere, my friend, you and your accomplice, it's to jail. As for my wife, since she is returned to life, she will also return to me. Oh, no! You don't move, sir, I warn you. But if you do... It will give me extreme pleasure to blow your head off with this gun. Extreme pleasure. I confess that at this point in Dr. Gordon Rainey's journal, I thought the tale over and done with. I was wrong. For really, it was only the beginning. I'll return shortly with Act Two. I said, I thought that Dr. Gordon Rainey's story had come to an end. He had gone with his friend, Guy Peterson, to the vault where the woman he loved lay dead in her coffin, only to find her alive. And then, as he planned to run away with her to save her from further torments at the hands of her husband, he was stopped by the appearance of that same husband, gun in hand, promising to have him and Dr. Rainey jailed. Giles, I entreat you. Let them go. They've done no harm. On the contrary, if it hadn't been for Guy and Dr. Rainey, I'd even now be lying in my coffin, alive. Would that you were. Damn you, woman, would that you were. Your unexpected return from the grave will lose me a fortune. But how can my being alive cost you anything? Lady Hastings is a widow. Lady Hastings has an income of 30000 a year. I proposed marriage to her on Tuesday, and she accepted me. You... you proposed marriage to another woman three days after your wife died? Why not? I'm alive, very much alive, and to live one needs money. Why the look, Dr. Rainey? You have more sense, it seems, than sensitivity, Sir Giles. <laughs> Insulting me will only worsen matters for you, Doctor, if that's possible. You can't be as unaware as you would like to seem that your career is ruined. A doctor, a physician, arrested for breaking and entering, breaking and entering a mortuary, a sacred repository of the dead. Sir Giles, you mustn't do this to Dr. Rainey. He helped me because he's my friend, a good and true friend. He was against it from the very start and would never have agreed to assist me had it not been for his deep and abiding sense of loyalty. Oh, do stop, do, or you shall have me in tears. Tears from a stone? <laughs> a miracle? Stone, am I? Oh. Very well, then. Stone, stone that will crush you, dear wife. Crush you until the death you've escaped will seem a paradise to you. Put down that gun and I'll... Ah, but I have no intention of putting down the gun. Certainly not until the bailiff arrives and takes you into custody, to jail, where I shall see to it you rot, the two of you. What do you mean, rot? I mean, quite simply, that once you're put in jail, you will never leave it. You will rot there, Doctor. You make no sense, Sir Giles. The penalty for breaking and entering... Penalties? Who speaks of penalty? I do. There are laws. Laws in this nation. But only one law here, me. I am the law in the village of Buckingham. I am Buckingham. Oh, it is. No, Sir Giles. You will not imprison this man for the rest of his life. Nor will you imprison me. Oh? And may I ask why not? Because I say so. Because I tell you so. No, don't look away. Look at me. Look into my eyes. Have the courage to look into them and tell me then. Will you imprison us? Mesmerism. Why, uh, why, such is my intention, yes? Is 
your intention, Sir Giles? Or was? Well, uh, well, it uh, certainly was. I, I mean to say, well, the way you put it, most eloquently. Good Lord. It's working. He's doing it again. Doing what? And you, being a man of sensitivity, my eloquence, the, the validity of what I say, has touched you. Is that not so? It is so, isn't it? Oh, I, uh... uh yeah, yes. Uh, seen in a different light, so to speak. Yes, it, uh, it would serve no purpose. No purpose to put you in jail. None. None, really. And so you let us go? You will let us go? Yes. Yes, go. Get out of my sight. The two of you. And never come back. Let us leave, Guy. Victorine. Under the law, there's nothing we can do. She is his wife. I can't leave her. You must. The bailiff will be here any moment. And I can't dominate Sir Giles' will with mine much longer. Victorine. Oh, my darling. What? To leave you with him? No, whatever happens to me will be harder to bear if you are in prison. Go, I entreat you. Go. Um, second thought. He's coming out of it. Guy, my friend, I've done all I can for you and I'll not see my career ruined because you... Because you're right. Goodbye, my darling, my, my dearest. Goodbye. <laughs> Mesmerize me, Gordon. Do something. Do anything to relieve me of this torment. You must control yourself. I think of her, dream of her. She is never out of my thought. And, and always I am stricken with the thought that my very imaginings are as nothing to what he is really doing to her. The beatings, the starving of her, her very loneliness, the vile subjection to his passions. Oh, merciful heaven, I shall go out of my mind. Yes, Guy, you shall. Unless you pull yourself together. Now, if you don't stop thinking of her, if you don't stop letting your fancy invent miseries, she is very likely not suffering. You will go insane. You will. Someone at the door. Who? Were you expecting someone? No, 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 no one. Whom would I want to see? Uh, I'll answer. Victorine! Save me, Gordon, save me! Good heavens! Come in, my dear. Guy, Guy, look, it's Victorine. Victorine? Oh. It is. It is. My dearest, what... I could bear it no more. Oh, yes. Oh, hold me in your arms. Hold me. Oh, Victorine. He may kill me, but I'll never go back. Never. He never loved me. And now he hates me because I keep him from marrying Lady Hastings and her fortune. And makes me pay. Oh, save me from him. Never let him take me back. Gordon, she's fainting. Here, Victorine, uh, some brandy. Oh. Now, uh, lie down uh, on the couch. Yeah. There, my love. Lie back. Relax. Uh, let me take over, Guy. Uh, go and bar the door. And bar it solidly. Bar the... He must know she has fled and to where she has fled. And he cannot risk her out of his sight because... Because what? Damn it, what? Say it! No. Let me say it for him. Because uh, once again I am near death. No! Yes. Unless I can find rest. Unless I can feel myself safe from him. I shall die. You will not. I want to die. Now stop talking, man, for once. Act. Now bar that door. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Ah, too oh. late, too late. No, I, I threw the bolt. Uh, not enough. Open up. Open up, I say. Or I'll have the door broken down. Gordon, what's wrong? Uh, unless you want a smashed door with nothing gained. Open it. Open, you hear? Open He'll take her back to Buckingham. Yes, he will. She's his wife. There's nothing you can do. Now, damn you all. At it again, are you? Stealing my wife. Taking what belongs to me. You men, take her. No. Over my no. dead body. Take her. Back. No. Enough. Oh, enough. Stand back or I'll brain you with this candlestick. All right, then. You'll be next, my friend. 
If you don't... Very well. Move back. You, uh... You're quite a hand with a candlestick, Dr. Rainey. Yes. You've laid my man out. I trust you know what this means for you. Perhaps you should consider what it means for you, Sir Giles. Me, sir? Yes, you're not in Buckingham now. You're in London. Seeking a wife who's run from her husband to her lover. No, sir. A woman who has come to her doctor. What? What do you say? Your, your wife is dangerously ill. You have only to use your eyes to see that. I, being her friend, I am sure she sought me at my residence. And, not finding me there, came here. Adroit? Most adroit, Dr. Rainey. Uh, may I ask, then, if you prescribed for her illness? Uh, not as yet, Sir Giles. Ah, but you will? Yes. Not good enough, Dr. Rainey. As her husband, or lawful husband, I intend to take her back with me to Buckingham. Victorine, my darling, come with me. No. Oh, really, now, you've no choice. No. Take your hands off her. No. You die if you have no recourse. In the eyes of the law, she is his wife. He wants her, and you cannot keep her from him. Sensibly said, Doctor. Here, dear wife, good wife. Faithful and loyal wife. Take my hand and let me help you from off that couch. Take my hand. Vile. You are vile. Filthy. Foul. I shall never touch you again. I'd rather burn off my hands than touch you, you evil man. I'll die rather than go back with you. Die. Damn you, come. No. 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 Gordon. She is dead. Oh, no. Are you sure, Doctor? She was pronounced dead once before, you know. There is no pulse. I can detect no vital signs. To all intents and purposes, she is dead. <laughs> ah, you modern day doctors. Always escaping in words and phrases to all intents and purposes. Uh, which is to say, you're not sure. Who is sure of anything, Sir Giles? However, considering what has gone before, we will keep her here under observation for a few days. You'll do nothing of the sort. You men, pick her up and bear her to my carriage. No! Wait, what are you doing? Possessing myself of my property, sir. Whether it be alive or dead. But you can't do this. You Take can't her do... to my carriage. Gordon! Yeah. There is nothing either of us can do. And Guy, she is dead. I'm virtually sure of that. What if she is not? Don't trouble yourself. Your own friend, the man you trust, Dr. Gordon Rainey, has pronounced her dead. All I intend to do is see that she is properly buried. This time... To stay properly buried. Is she dead? You must understand, in those days, more than half a century ago, one was never sure. I'll return shortly for Act Three. for a moment how you would feel if you thought someone you loved might conceivably have been buried alive. And you will understand the feelings of young Guy Peterson. Think again how you would feel if you were a close friend of Guy's, a physician who risks his career every time he consents to help Guy spirit his beloved from her tomb. And you will then understand why Dr. Gordon Rainey wrote in his journal... I feel if Guy is not mad, he is close to it. He has never been a robust man, but on the contrary, something of a neurotic. So it was that I refused, and again refused, when he begged, Help me. I beg you, Gordon, help me. That is what I am trying to do, by refusing what you ask. We were caught in the act of entering the Buckingham vault the first time. We would surely be caught a second. There could be no doubt that Sir Giles is having the place guarded. If there's a guard, we'll get past him somehow, or knock him unconscious, or... Oh, yes, you, 
You could mesmerize him as you did that dog and, and Sir John. Guy, my dear good friend, listen to me. First, Victorine is dead. How can you say that? She suffers, she must suffer from some sort of malady that makes her only appear to be dead. There are such maladies. Yes, everything you say is true, but... You admit she could yet be alive. Buried alive in that tomb even now. Oh, stop that. Stop it. The second thing I was going to point out is that mesmerism doesn't always work. Some people, the kind of peasant type who'd likely be guarding the vault, cannot be brought under the hypnotic influence. Yes, but... And a third thing is this. I am a doctor. If I get caught again, Sir Giles could end my career. And all I have tried to be, all the good I can accomplish in this world, would be set at naught. I'm sorry, Guy. I cannot risk it again. Then I must do it alone. You will not do it alone. You cannot stop me. No one, nothing can stop me from rescuing Victorine from that vault. Guy, you are mad. You are thinking irrationally, acting senselessly. That's my concern, and certainly no longer yours. Oh, Guy, Guy. Leave me, Gordon. I must prepare for the journey to Salisbury. Well, leave, I said. No, no. I'll go with you. You've changed your mind? I have not. But this is a mad business, and I'm a fool to help you, but... I am also your friend. Gordon? Yes, the vault is God. Yes. I see the man. <laughs> a big brute he is. Do you think you can mesmerize him? Bring him under? Uh, what did you call it? Hypnotic influence? I doubt it. He is the type I told you about. All muscle and little brain. And it's a dark night to make things worse. You wouldn't be able to see my eyes clearly. Do, do you dare try? Well, I have no choice. But keep this in mind, Guy. Yes? If I fail as I most certainly shall, run for it. Do you understand? Don't try to fight him. Run. Yes, whatever you say. All right, now then. Let's step out of these bushes and walk toward him. Say and do nothing. Leave things to me. Come. Who's there? Oh, uh, uh, don't shoot, friends. Then stand where you be. Uh, let me have a look at you. Of course. We mean no harm, friend. We are simply two gentlemen who got lost in these woods. And so... Well, how come you're lost? This here is Buckingham Manor. And it's surrounded, all of it, with an iron fence. Yes. How come um, you got in? Well, uh, we really don't know. It's a dark night, uh, and our eyes, our eyes couldn't see much. <laughs> a likely story. You must believe me. My sight is very poor as it is. Very poor. Uh, look for yourself. Look into my eyes and see for yourself. Here yeah, now, what is this? Look into your eyes. It's up to the manor house with you two. Well, your answer to Sir Giles for trespassing on his... Guy... Takes care of him. You, you, you stabbed him. You couldn't control him. I said to run if I couldn't, but... Guy, I think you've killed him. Quickly, into the vault. Wait. What's happened to you? Don't don't you realize that you've just murdered a man and it's... Oh, you've gone mad. You have gone mad. I am as sane as you. But mad or sane, I must get Victorine out of that vault. Now, come. All right, all right, but heaven help me. What have I got myself into now? Oh, pry bar, the pry bar. Where is it? Where? Well, you had it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sir. I must hurry. Hurry, she's alive in there. Her coffin alive. I must... There. Come along, Gordon. Come along. All right, all right. Uh, there. There's a coffin. Yes. Look fast. Get the lid off. It's insane. It's gone insane. Victorine? Can you hear me? Are you alive, my dearest? Perhaps fainted. Oh, huh, Gordon? That's possible, isn't it? Alive, but in a faint? Oh, Guy, my poor dear friend. Uh, uh, there. Lids off, and she... She... Dead. As I told you, dead. Well, we, we can't be sure. You know we can't be sure. Guy, in the name of reason... Help me. Help me get her out of the coffin. To what purpose? We'll take her back with us to London and... Take her back where? To my place. The first place Sir Giles will come to. Then to yours. Mine. 
Do you realize what you're asking of me? If you're the friend you claim to be... But, but... what you ask is impossible. You've already made me your unwitting accomplice to murder, and now... Guy, you are out of your mind. And you, Gordon, are no friend. Guy. Guy, I beg you, leave her where she is. She's dead. Leave her at peace. She is not dead. And I am taking her back to London. <laughs> If whoever may read these pages of my journal thinks me a fool, I could not agree more. But Guy was my closest friend and, what's more, was clearly deranged by the love he bore Victorine and his horror of letting her be buried alive. So we took her body to my rooms in London. Three days she lay on the couch in my sitting room, Guy never leaving her side night or day. But on the third day, I knew something must be done to end this madness of his. Look at her. There's no sign, not one, of decomposition. Yes, because it is the middle of winter and we've kept the windows open and no fire in the fireplace. The sitting room of mine is a virtual ice house. No, I know. Now listen to me. What you persist in doing is not only lunacy, it is sacrilege. The dead deserve decent burial. If you love Victorine, as you say you do, let us bury her, Guy. Bury her tonight. Where? Then you will. Yes. Where can we take her? Well, I thought of that and prepared for it. A grave awaits her body in St. Pancras Cemetery. All is arranged. We can take her now under cover of night. <sighs> then let us do it. Good, good. Now, I've kept my carriage waiting below. Do you want to carry her or shall I? Let me. It will be the last time I... Hold it in my arms. All right. Pick her up, Guy. Yes. Yes. Gordon? Oh. Gordon, what was that? It's nothing. Come on, let's go downstairs. But, but she gave a sigh when I picked her up. Guy. You heard? Gordon, you heard? Good Lord, I did. Here, m move aside. She's alive. I, I knew it. I, alive. Quiet, man. In heaven's name, be quiet. Victorine. Victorine, do you hear me? Yeah. I have taken your hand in mine. Do you feel it? No. Can you open your eyes? If you can, open them. She has. Gordon. She's gazing at me. Victorine, do you see Guy? Farewell. Farewell? I am near death. No. Only a spark of life remains. No. Oh. No, she must not die. Gordon, stop her. What are you saying? Mesmerism. The hypnotic influence. Use it. Are you mad? Use it? How? Command her not to die. Command her to live. Command her to live? Command what to live? when there was scarce a breath of life in her. her. Her mind, her spirit, what? But I did it. May God, in his infinite mercy, forgive me. I did it. Using the powers of mesmerism, I held her eyes with mine and commanded her, forced her to live. Even though, over and over, she cried out... I am dead. Let me go. I'm dead. But I did not let her go, could not let her go, because... Yes, I confess it. Because the experiment fascinated me. I, Dr. Gordon Rainey, committed for over five long weeks, committed the sin, the crime, the sacrilege of holding the spirit within a dead body to this earth, even though it pleaded, entreated, begged... Release me! Oh, release me! In a short time. Yes. But tell me first, what are you? Spirit? Soul? Mind? What? I am dead. 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 What's that? Someone at the door, I'll answer. You! Found you at last, eh, you damn grave robber? Sir Giles. Yes, and you, Dr. Rainey, who so helped me, will no longer be called doctor when I'm through with you. No, Giles, no. Oh, what's this? 
she lives. No, Sir Giles. But she, she speaks. I heard her speak. Here. Let me see for myself. Stay away from her. Don't you touch her. Get out of my way. Oh. Don't touch her, I said. Don't touch her. Oh. You shot him. You killed Guy. Before he stabbed me to death, as he stabbed my servant. Self-defense, sir. And now enough of this. I came for my wife's body, but it appears I shall be taking a wife back to Buckingham Manor with me. Rouse her. Rouse her at once. I cannot, Sir Giles. She is dead. Has been dead for more than six weeks. Well, I heard her speak. Yes. But it was her soul. Her spirit. I don't know what. But not her body. Her body is dead. Yes. Dead. I beg you don't hold me any longer. Guy is here. Let me go to him. I say to you that I am dead. Let me go. She comes with me. No. She goes where she should have gone long since now, had it not been for me. Victorine, I release you. Go. And in the sanctity of death, join the lover you never had in life. <laughs> What's happening? Her body. Her body is disintegrating before my eyes. Rotting. Moldering. Horrible. indeed it was. For using Edgar Allan Poe's own words, upon the couch there now lay not the body of Victorine, but a nearly liquid mass of loathsome, detestable putrescence. Mr. Poe's words, mind, when he set out to horrify you, he horrified you. I'll be back shortly. Premature Burial is only one of a number of stories by the master Edgar Allan Poe I've had the pleasure of bringing you. We now owe, and generations to come will owe, so much to his imagination, his vibrant fancy, that it might be nice to think of him now and then, let his name pass through your thoughts as it does through mine, and to wish him well wherever he may be. Our cast included Keir DeLay, Paul Hecht, Guy Sorrell, and Marion Selvers. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. What is her condition? Well, it's not fatal, thank God. Not even very serious. Badly bruised, uh, cut over her right eye, but she's going to be all right. The monster failed to make good his threat to kill her. We may indeed thank God for that. Yes. Well, at least we know more than we did before, Monsieur Dupin. We know that the murderer is a big man, a huge man of unbelievable strength, and that he has black hair. We know a great deal more than that, Pierre. We do? Well, I do, and so do you. Only, as I've said before... You don't know, you know. Oh, monsieur. Monsieur, I do not have your brilliant brain. Well, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you can solve this awful mystery, that you can save Yvette. The murderer failed this time, but he'll try again. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Again tomorrow night at 10.30 as Edgar Allan Poe Week continues the first anniversary celebration of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater on KRNT, Des Moines. <laughs>